Joshua Smith here, and welcome to the GSD Mode Podcast. Now get shit done and smash that subscribe button now. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode Podcast interview. And today, you guys, we are blessed and honored to be joined with another badass guest here on the podcast. So our guest, before we jump into guys, just, just to give you some context of you know, all the amazing shit our guest has uh, uh, created and, and done and the successes that he's had. Um, so he's currently has the fastest growing real estate company in Michigan. Um, last year, they sold over 1,300 homes, uh, did over 325 million in gross volume sales and has grown to over 200 agents. He also has coached over 600 agents all over the country um, and the creator of the reverse selling methodology and uh, you, you have to correct me if I'm wrong on this, Brandon, but I believe when when you were actively selling, you built up to the point where you personally were listing over 100 homes every single year consistently um, uh, uh, with that. So really stoked and honored to have Brandon Morinan on the show. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you so much, Josh. I appreciate it. I think this is a long time coming, so I'm excited to, to uh, drop some value to the audience today. Yeah, no, I'm stoked, man. I, I know how busy you are. Appreciate you taking time to be here with us, dude. And and look, man, the number one question I'm getting every single day right now, and not just every single day, like a dozen times every single day, as I'm sure you are as well, is everybody wants more listings. You know, right? And and you know, I think the timing of 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 having you on right now is is you know perfect for this because it's. Record low inventory rates all throughout all throughout the country, and um, you know it, it's it's something that we all need. And, and I mean, my, our, I was I was looking at the numbers just the other day in my real estate team. Um, uh, you know, we average uh, up till this point, you know, been averaging for the last couple of years twenty new traditional listings a week. You know, not counting like off market stuff. You know, and right now it's a hard push to get twenty a month, but that's with a large team, right? You know, I, and dude, it is it is a crazy push. Uh, crazy. But, you know, before we jump into to all of that and going through all the, the amazing shit that you're up to and, and how you created that success, you know, I'm always intrigued in our guest journeys that led them here in the first place, man. So if we're running the clocks, you know, I mean, what, what led you to real estate? What did you do before? And, and how, how the hell did this journey start in the first place? Yeah, I love it. So I grew up and you, you're from Michigan. So I grew up in Rochester. It's a very affluent uh, city in Michigan. At one time, it was, it was one of the wealthiest cities in the country. And I grew up with nothing. So, so, uh, you know, a child at a very young age growing up with nothing with his friends are loaded. And you get it, you know, where I'm from people. I mean, you've got 16 year old kids driving brand new escalades to school. I'm, I'm sitting there walking with barely any shoes on. Right. So what that does to a child and the way I explain it, it's like waking up on Christmas morning as a child and never getting a present and watching all of your friends open gifts for literally your entire childhood. So for me, it, it like, you can call it, put a chip on my shoulder to go out there and win as an adult. And I'm so blessed at the time. I didn't, I didn't realize this, of course, as a kid, I was very upset, but, but now looking back on it, it was the thing that gave me what my work ethic, my superpower today to go out there and build a big life. So grow up that way. I don't go traditional route, Josh, of going to college, even though all my friends are going to Michigan State, Michigan, these big colleges, everyone's saying, Brandon, you're going to be a loser if you don't go to college. And I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to get into sales. I wanted to learn how to lead people, how to serve people. So right out of high school, uh, I get into coaching right away with Robert Kiyosaki, rich dad, poor dad. We start going through that whole journey. I got a great mentor. I started leading a sporting goods store uh, right here in Metro Detroit. And I had a mentor and he was, he was educated through the traditional system. He was an attorney by trade and he was an entrepreneur when I met him. And I'll never forget. He told me, if you want to get wealthy, you have to learn how to sell and how to lead people in business. And Brandon, by the way, here's a little secret. They don't teach you that in college. So I don't go that route. I work with this guy until right out of high school and I barely finished high school. Uh, I work with him out of high school till I was about 21. At 21, I get recruited by the largest mortgage company today in the world, Quicken Loans, which is now Rocket Mortgage. 
as a 21 year old, I'm working side by side by millionaires, young people making insanely great money, arguably Josh, the best leaders in business today. I get mentored by billionaires and spend a lot of time with some really high level people end up, uh, meeting my wife there. So we're, I grew up as a loan officer, writing loans and, and growing up on the phone. And we started investing in real estate when the market tanked in 07. And I say, well, probably doesn't make uh, a whole lot of sense for us to have all of our eggs in one basket, both being mortgage loan officers during this period of time, we're investing in real estate. Why don't I just focus on real estate 100%? So that's what led me into real estate. And, um, I joined a team right out of the gate, started learning the business, learning the listing side of the business, fell in love with that side of the business and grew my personal business to your point earlier, to the point where I was selling a hundred homes a year with one assistant. This was all on the listing side of the business, referring all my buyers out, didn't want anything to do with that. And I did it all through uh, direct outbound prospecting on the phone, which I still believe in today. It's the path of most resistance. It's the hardest thing through skills. And that's what I, my life's work is today is teaching people my reverse selling strategy, but that's what got me into the business. Yeah, I love it. So what, so what, what time for it was that around 2008 then when you yep. jumped in 2008? So, so not only are you jumping in that, that, I mean, that, that's when everything was, I mean, it really kind of started 2007, but 2008 was when it was just burning to the ground, dude. The worst, the worst <laughs> time ever. It's like 2009 when I got into the business, 2009, 2010. Okay. Right yep. Now. Yep. So, so then, cause I mean, it didn't start for most areas. It didn't really start to kind of turn the corner to about 2012. That's right. So, so I'm curious, man, because not only, so you're, you're, like you're, you're the firefighter when everybody's running out, you're running in, you know, right? So, so I guess the good news is you maybe didn't have as much competition as maybe you would today in a, in a strong market like it is now, you know, but I'm curious, man. I mean, a lot, dude, I knew so many, cause I got licensed in 2005 and I knew so many top agents, dude, that um, when the market crashed, like they became non-existent and they, they, they had to get out of the game. Yeah. Right. Um, it was a very difficult time for most that couldn't shift and adapt and so forth. So I'm curious when you jumped in and it, it, and those that are watches that weren't there, you don't know how difficult that was. Um, like what, what'd you do? Like, what'd you do out of the gate, man? To, to cause obviously you, you, you not just survived, but you thrived, you know, during those times. So like, you know, that you're number one, like, what did that look like for you? Yeah. So I was, I was really, really fortunate and I have to give credit where credit's due. Uh, I went to go work for the top agent in my state who, you know, Jeff Glover and, and I owe him a lot, you know, and I think a lot of people don't know that about my story, but I watched an interview that Jeff did Josh with Mike Ferry. And this was during this, this terrible time, especially in Detroit, right? So 808, 09. And I watch a video with Jeff and, and Mike said the exact same thing you just asked which was all these people getting out of the business. And he asked Jeff, you know, how much money did you make selling real estate in arguably the worst market ever? And I'll never forget it. Jeff said, man, I'm almost embarrassed to tell you, but I made $450,000. And me, I'm like, holy shit, this guy at the bare bones minimums making 450. I mean, he's a young guy. I'm like, that's crazy. If that's the worst case scenario, I've got to go work with this dude because at the time 450, that's a lot of money. Right. And so he's making 450 in the worst economic market in the history of the world. So I go start working with Jeff and you know, we, we, we talk a lot about skills. We start, i just started calling for sale by owners, expired listings. There were tons of them. You remember this, uh, you know, start really working that market, the low hanging fruit. And I remember my first month I go out into the market and I get 20 listings. My first month as an agent, none of them sold because <laughs> I couldn't price property. The market was crazy and I'll never forget that. But, but what I started doing was just learning how to, I had, I had sales skills, right? Growing up at Quicken, I had to learn the real estate conversation, but I was so used to being on the phone, Josh, for eight hours, 10 hours a day at Quicken, like they tracked your talk time. Like I grew up, my whole sales career 
I was required to be on the phone six, eight hours a day. I didn't know that in real estate, people didn't do that. So, so I just did the same thing and just came out of the gate being on the phone, having conversations and um, using my skills to take listings. And it's still what I teach today. Yeah. I love it, dude. So, all right. So you, you mentioned that you start off calling FISBOs and expireds the lowest hanging fruit, but I know that you're, you're, you, you, you ended up kind of uh, uh, going towards or not going towards like, like you decided, okay, FISBOs yeah. were the, the lucrative spot for you to be. Um, for those that are thinking, uh, cause a lot of, like when I hear from a lot of agents and agents reach out to me on the podcast and so forth, it's, uh, you know, they kind of put it all in the same bucket with like FISBOs expires and circle prospecting and, you know, and so forth. Um, um, and, but then that doesn't give them the ability to really master any of them if they're trying to do all three of them simultaneously and, you know, so forth. Uh, uh, but if somebody's curious, if they're thinking, okay, like which path should I go? Why? why have FISBOs been so good for you? And what would you, what would you say to the benefit if somebody's asking you why FISBOs versus expireds? I love it. I mean, here's the argument I make, Josh, is I, I believe with every ounce of my being that a for sale by owner gives a brand new agent or an experienced agent the greatest opportunity to get a listing. Here's why. When we look at all the lead generation strategies and tactics, the question guys like you and I asked to say, well, well, where do we spend our time, energy, and effort? To me, it makes sense to go after the, the only lead source that I know of right now, unless you tell me otherwise, where it's an active seller with their hand in the sky saying, I'm selling right now, actively selling. Expireds aren't that way. Absentee owners aren't that way. Zillow leads aren't that way. Divorce leads aren't that way. No one's actively selling. So that's like the biggest uh, piece of lead generation that everyone struggles with. This is an active seller. So that's there's a lot of value in that. That's number one. Number two, when you talk about, okay, well, what's the next piece of lead generation? I hear you say it all the time. Lead generating leads is simple. The second part about lead generation is actually having conversations. Well, a for sale by owner, what are they doing? They're sitting by the phone waiting for the buyer to call. So from a contact rate perspective, nothing, nothing can even compare. I don't care how people are generating leads today. The contact ratio for us is like 70, 80% contact rate with a for sale by owner. So that's the second big uh, opportunity with this lead pillar um, is you're having real conversations with real active sellers. Next, if you look at, okay, well, what's the best way, the fastest way to get a listing? Imagine a world getting face to face with an active seller who's selling their home today. A FISBO, Josh, is the easiest seller lead to be in their living room in the next 30 minutes. And so- and I can keep going on and on. Those are the big three. It's, I know they're selling. It's the easiest person to get on a phone call and have a conversation with. And it's the easiest lead pillar to be face to face in their living room. And for all of those reasons, that's why I believe a for sale by owner gives us the best opportunity uh, uh, in real estate. Yep. Love it, dude. So then, um, all right, so let's just kind of break down the process then. Yes. Right. Uh, uh, you know, I'm a big believer in, in not having to reinvent the wheel, like find, find the person that's done it and, and learn from them, man. And, and you're the dude, you know, right. So, um, I, uh, I, I'm not a cold caller, man. I, I've, you know, haven't built my business that way. So I don't have your expertise. So you got to take advantage of picking your brain here. So, um, all right. So you've got um, multiple components to it, you know, right. Like number one, you got, you got to, get them on the phone so you can have that conversation with them. So then you can get to that next step, you know, right. Um, so anybody that's watching this man, like, like if we were to break it down, cause you've got, you get the tactic, then you got the strategy, you know, right? so if we look at, you know, FISBO, whether you want to call a tactic or the medium, you know, right. And, and it's, it's never the, the medium itself that allows us to create success. It's the strategy that we apply to it. You know, right. Um, so just to kind of break down your, your proven strategy, um, uh, uh, you know, I mean, wh- what does that phone look, uh, that phone call look like, especially right now when you've got so many people calling because it's such a small amount of inventory, you yeah. know, um, uh, what does that look like? How are you differentiating yourself where then you can have success at then getting that meeting? All right, I'm going to break down the whole part and we can unpack this step by step. Uh, and, and so let's go deep here. So the first thing that an agent has to uh, 
understand is we have got to get out of the business of convincing and get into the business of serving. And when people think of selling, they think it's like, I got to convince them of something. Well, what I teach, and I call it reverse selling, is leading a conversation or relationship through the law of reciprocity. So it's through giving first without wanting anything in return that you can call that's a pattern interrupt with neuro linguistics, right? So let me give the audience an example. So what I teach all of my agents in my coaching program or my brokerage and what, how I built my business with Fizbo's is I'm communicating with a for sale by owner, maybe the only agent in the marketplace that's cheering them on for selling on their own. And so when, when agents hear this the first time, they're like, what are you talking about? I was trained to call a for sale by owner, Brandon, and convince them all the reasons why listing with an agent is better than selling on their own. We do the exact opposite. So when we call Josh and we communicate uh, and we position ourselves to support them selling on their own with no convincing of them trying to list their house with us, first and foremost, that sets us apart from every other agent that's calling. The second part is we're positioning ourselves as a backup strategy only. So we allow, one of our for sale by owner rules of engagement is, we have to allow the for sale by owner to go through the process and feel the pain on their own before we have an opportunity to serve them. So the first part of the system is yes, getting them on a phone call, okay? And positioning the conversation in a way that we are supportive of them selling on their own and communicating using uh, hypothetical situations around having a conversation, Josh, around the future. So if we were to role play it real quick, because I think audiences love the role play and I would call you and I would say, ring, 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 you would say, Yep. Hello, Josh. Yep. Yeah. This Josh, is Josh, this is Brandon. I'm a local realtor. I saw you selling your house. I understand you're selling it on your own. Is that right? That's correct. Listen, I totally respect that. I don't care what all the other agents are saying in this market. I, I know you're going to be able to sell it on your own. I'm curious if you might be open to the idea of an agent bringing you a buyer for the property. Most Frisbos say, yeah, they're open to it. I'm going to ask you some questions, Josh, around why are you moving? When are you looking to move? And here's the question. Josh, listen, I mean, the market in Scottsdale right now is insanely hot. The reality is you're probably gonna have multiple offers by this weekend. I'm curious if in 30 days from now, you're unsuccessful selling for whatever reason, at that point in time, would you consider potentially looking at some other options? Now, a lot of for sale by owners say, yeah, listen, I mean, if that happens, sure. Well, we have to look at why they're saying that. And so, Josh, the second part of that is what we call speaking in hypotheticals. So we put the for sale by owner in a position, we position that question that they believe that day never, ever, ever comes. And this is why they're open to giving us the answer to the question. Does that make sense? Yep. So then they say, yeah, dude, listen, if, if that is the case, we can't sell it on our own. Sure, we'd be open to some other options, which then opens up the opportunity for us to talk about our for sale by owner backup plan. And that's how we're setting that face-to-face -face preview based on a backup strategy. So, so, so then that leads us into that face-to-face -face appointment, uh, which we're, we're obviously looking at the house, we're going through a CMA, uh, and we're presenting that for sale by owner backup strategy, which then leads us into follow-up. But I'll stop there if you want to unpack any of that. Now, I, I love it, dude. I, I love it. I, I didn't know what your strategy was going into this. And I, I had the assumption that it was just the, the bottom line up front, like so many do and figured you had, had your own tweaks to it, you know, right? Um, you know, but uh, uh, I mean, I love it, man. You know, but it, it, and here, here's, and you might know the stats better than, than I do the current stats, because this was about 12 months ago. So they might have changed between then and now. But, sure. you know, um, um, I was in a, 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 a private mastermind with some of the, the, the leadership, you know, higher level leadership at, at from Quicken, right? Yep. Quicken now owns for sell by owner.com. Mm -hmm. And they were sharing a bunch of statistics in their current statistics. And it was you know, around, okay, like it was something like 67% of for sale by owners. And this was in like early 2020. 
um, end up listing with a real estate agent, not just listing, but listing and successfully selling with a real estate agent over time. You know, right? And and then they went into, which I thought was really interesting, of the number one reason that for sell by owners, uh, a list with, on their own versus hiring a realtor, um, it isn't commissions. That's like number two. The first yep. one is that they believe that they can do it on their own. And to add another layer to that, they believe that they can do a better job. That's you know, right. right. And that might have just been from a past experience or whatever that reason may be. And as you mentioned, man, like it's so impossible to convince. Like you try, try to get a hardcore uh, Republican, a hardcore Democrat, oh. try to get them to get, you know, this person wants to vote for Biden, this person for Trump. And they're right. like, dude, you would have more luck talking to a brick wall. So it allows them to then self-discover that, oh shit, I, I thought I could do this on my own, but now I need a realtor. Now you put yourself there. And, and you know, we've done a very similar strategy, not in that same way, but offering, because we already we do a lot of open houses, you know, right? So we go to Fizbo's, especially in this market right now, and we offer open houses to them, you know, right? Um, um, we give them a copy of the lead list. If there's anybody interested, we give them the buyer, they can run with it, you know, right? Um, and our, our historic numbers as 38% of Fizbo's end up listing with us after the fact, because we position ourselves for, as it, we develop that relationship, you know, right? 100%, um, 100%. All right, so then, yeah, let, let's jump into the meeting. Now, now they, they have the meeting. I mean, what, what's discussed at the, is, is the positioning yourself for the meeting, um, uh, because if they don't think that that time will ever come where they need to hire you, is the, the meeting more positioned to, all right, let me check out your home. I, I can give you, you know, maybe a free resource kit, but then also I can snap some photos, see it, send it out to my buyer list. Yeah, so, so we position the meeting as, uh, uh, as almost like a consultation to help you sell on your own. And when I'm there, I'll walk you through how our for sale by our backup plan works. So if you do need something to fall back on, you've got all your options on the table. And we say, do you think that that's fair? Is that reasonable? Fair enough. We gain agreement. And they say, yeah, that's fine. That's fair. Come on over. So now let's talk about the meeting. So we get to the meeting. The first thing that we do is we do a tour. We're taking copious notes. We're giving them feedback, asking questions about the property and, and really just doing what we're supposed to do, which is just serving the consumer and giving them tactics and strategies on how to sell on their own. Again, most realtors are not doing this. The second thing we do is we go through a full Zillow ad consultation. So we print their Zillow ad. We bring it with us on this preview appointment. And we're going through like the description and the photos and the pricing strategy and how they position their photos. And we're, we're coaching the seller on how they could be selling their home. Then from that point, because we've, we've poured into them so much that opens up for our CMA presentation. So this is where we go through the market. You know what that, that looks like. We go through that deep, deep rooted uh, market information to position ourselves as an expert without having to tell them we're an expert. At that point in time is the first transi uh, transitional statement into something that sounds like this. So Josh, listen, this point based on the market, based on everything I've seen with your home, listen, at the end of the day, I believe you can get this property sold. If there's ever a day where you want to consider other options, there's three things that we do for, for sale by owners. If you're okay with it, I'd like to share with those uh, with you before I leave. At that point, nine times out of 10, they say yes. So this is where we're going through what we call our for sale by owner value proposition and what it looks like for us to work together. We're talking about flexible commissions and they get to sell their house. Uh, they get to continue selling their house even when they hire us, stuff like that, right? Um, and so we, we're walking them through our for sale by owner backup plan and details and we leave it with them. We don't pressure them. We just serve, 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 serve. Um, and then, and then we're, we're, we're out. That's the entire face-to-face -face appointment from a high level, which sets us up then to earn our follow-up system, which, I mean, you've been saying it for years. I mean, the fortune's in the follow-up. And so that'd be the next part of the system that we go through is walking them through what our, for, our for sale by owner follow-up strategy looks like. Yeah. Love it, dude. Love it, man. So, um, yeah. And, and I, I love that it's, it's non-pushy, you know, um, uh, and, and you're coming to value. It's making them know you like you trust you. That's yeah. Right. right. You position yourself as a resource and, and you mentioned you future pace yourself or if that yep. time comes. Um, uh, and then with that follow-up, you know, what, what is, like, what have you found an important frequency, you know, um, um, you know, I was talking with a buddy of mine that, that, you know, does a lot of FISBO is kind of a similar, you know, different, but similar strategy, but he's like, look, man, you got to fall up at least once a week. We found a few, if you fall up, like every 
21 days it, it drops off or, or what, what that may be like what what have you found to be kind of that sweet spot and then in addition to that what methods are you hitting them with the follow-up all right so this is this is where the whole thing comes together and i think you'll appreciate this so we are insane about follow-up so after we've had this face-to-face -face appointment josh i believe the reason we do the preview appointment is to start the follow-up process. That's not the end. What we've all been taught was like the appointment was the end-all be-all. I believe the appointment is the start of the follow-up process. So Monday, we call them every single Monday. All the FISBOs that we meet with, every lead that we generate, they're getting a phone call every single Monday. Every week, in addition to the phone call, they're getting a piece of direct mail once per week. And we use a company called Mailbox Power. It's all automated. So we set up the campaign and our mailers go out once a week for eight weeks. It's all systematized. Every Wednesday, they're getting an email from us. Now there's a couple strategies on the email, but to make it easy, we just set them up just like a buyer in the MLS to get all the active pendings and solds. It's what they care about most anyways, right? So they're getting a weekly email. And then we're putting them in a custom Facebook audience. So they're seeing our, our, uh, our, our, face, our face on Facebook, some videos and different things of that nature. And then they get a text every single Friday. And then we are off, also offering to do open houses for them on Saturdays. So we follow up six times a week, every week, not once a week, six times a week, every week until they end up, so we get the listing, they list with somebody else or they sell on their own. Yep. I love that idea. That's so awesome, man. Uh, um, then uh, curious, do you position during that, when you're in that initial meeting, um, um, you know, of what the follow-up is going to be offering the open house and just kind of give an idea of, of what to expect. Yes. You know, Cause it sounds like these are all just great resources that you're providing them. It's not necessarily, it. you know, hardcore in your face, like, you know, it's all serving them with tips, yeah. strategies. Did you do this? Next, you need to do this. Next, you need to do this. Next, you need to do this. It's, it's the same way we would train and coach a realtor. Now we're teaching realtors how to coach and train sellers. That's the whole follow-up strategy. It's serve, 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 serve. And we both know what happens with the law of reciprocity. The more you give, the more you get. And so uh, the whole follow-up is all built around that premise because that day when the for sale by owner gets frustrated and said this, says the hell with this, these agents that are going through this system become the obvious choice. Yeah, love it. So then with, with the mail piece, I, I, I mean, any is it the same piece every time? Is, is it different every time? It's different now. We used to just have a letter, but this company, I don't know if you've heard of them, it's called Mailbox Power. It used to be Banner Season. They are the first mail company that I know of that has helped us put a direct mail campaign on automation, like an email drip campaign. And so you could set up the campaign. So it's a different piece. Every week, it's a different piece for eight weeks. So it's eight total pieces. Uh, one kind of further solidifies our physical backup plan. And then it's just serve, 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 serve. So we're awesome. hitting them from all angles. We're hitting them on social. We're hitting them in their mailbox, in their inbox, phone call, text, the whole kit and caboodle, face to face. We're hitting them through every avenue possible. Yeah, I love it, dude. I mean, especially in the, in, I shouldn't say especially, but it becomes more important in, a, in a, a extreme low inventory market like like we're in um uh you know because i mean it's you still have the same amount of agents and they're yep. but then they're they're all going after this so so having the multi-channel is powerful you know and it, it should be effective um but then you know you, you got your usp man you're differentiating yourself from from the other agents and you know it, it, is there is there a drop-off time so let's just say four months goes by home hasn't sold yet and, and, but I haven't listed with you. Like, is there a drop off time where you're like, all right, like this is kind of the cutoff time where we realize our efforts aren't going to pay off anymore. Yeah. So typically all the convert, all the conversion right now is, is somewhere between four and six weeks. That's the sweet spot right there. And so if something was going to happen, that's why we do an eight week campaign on everything. And so, yeah, we, we go all out for two months and if we don't get anything there, the, the, the money part of the follow-up stops. So the investment in direct mail and the Facebook, ad, those drop down. They're still going to go on our weekly email. That's free through our MLS. 
They're still going to go my lead follow-up on Monday. We're still going to run that play, but all of the paid strategies are going to be dropped off. Yep. Yep. Love it, dude. So then, um, uh, well, some kind of, I guess, system questions, if you will, uh, sure. system questions and then numbers questions. Um, uh, you know, it used to be all the FISBO and maybe every market's different, but like here in Arizona, uh, now like you can't get FISBO data off Zillow anymore. Right. You know, and I don't know if that's been a nationwide thing, but like, you can't even sign up as a premier agent on Zillow anymore out here. Like you gotta yep. essentially like, if, if I get a, a lead from them, it's a 35% referral fee or a 30% referral fee depending on, on the price point and, you know, um, um, you know, there's strict performance matrix that need to be hit for that. And it, it, they're changing the game quickly. Um, so where, where do you find the best place to get data to be able to go after these? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, I mean, the big three, I think, are still doing a nice job. So we use Vulcan 7. We still believe they've got the best, highest, uh, uh, best data on the market. Uh, but you can go Red X or My Leads Plus or Agent Express or Expresso Agent. All those places, I think, are still doing a nice job. So, so uh, but we use Vulcan 7 for the most part. Yeah, love it, dude. Um, and then as far as you talked about four to six weeks being really that sweet spot. Yeah. So, so it's kind of one of those things where, and, and, and I just want to make sure audience really understands this point that you mentioned of, all right, like all that front end stuff existed to, to pre-frame the follow-up and the follow-up is the power of this, you know, right. And that was all the, the pre, you know, uh, you know, as Robert Cialdini calls it, you know, the, yeah. the pre-persuasion process, Correct. you know, right. Um, all right. So then, so then, okay. Like you got that eight week follow plan. It's like, okay, if agents listen to this, if you're not, if you don't nail that down, you're not committed to that. It, it may not make sense to even jump in. Um, uh, uh, so we've got that going on. That sweet spot is four to six weeks. Uh, um, um, but then from there, from a number standpoint, man, cause I, I see agents get discouraged and they don't get yep. things enough time. And, you know, I mean, what you put a hundred people in this system, you know, right. Or let's just say you reach out to a hundred, how many then turn on average into the face to face that get into the follow-up plan. And then, you know, how many turn into a listing all the way to a sale? Yeah. I love it. I love it. I know you're a huge numbers guy. So let's nerd out here for a second. So, so I call it the FISBO conversion funnel. And so here's what it looks like. So the first conversion is contact ratio. So we're getting in contact on average with about 70% of the for sale by owners. So just let's, and let me take a step back. Most markets are getting about a hundred a month. It's about three or four FISBOs a day on average. So, so let's take the hundred, the hundred mark. So hundred for sale by owners, we should be able to in that month, talk to about 70 of them. Okay. Now of, of the, of the, uh, of the 70, our goal is then to get 20 of them, Josh, 20 of them to meet with us face to face. So we look at about a 25% conversion from contact to preview appointment set, right? So we got 70% is our first conversion, 25% of our second conversion. Of the 20, we're seeing through the follow up a 35% conversion into listing appointment. Okay, so we get you with me so far? Yep. So that's 20. And then of those 20, our agents are getting seven listing appointments. And that happens, those appointments happen in the following month. And then a baseline conversion, in the, if an agent sucks at their listing presentation, we're seeing them get half. So an agent that follows this exact same system is getting three listings a month, only working for sale by owners. That's it no paid advertising. They're not doing anything. They're just working for sale by owners. They can get three listings a month uh, within about six to eight weeks of following this exact system. And that's what the conversions are. So 70% contact ratio, 25% uh, appointment set ratio, 35% from appointment to listing presentation, 50% converting at the listing appointment. Love it, dude. So have you, have you experimented with on the front end, instead of calling, you know, targeting with, with some type of video ads or, or, or positioning it of uh, selling it, like not selling, but like having a guide available, like, you know, um, you know, the, the, the top 10 things that you must 
know, understand, and do as a for sale by owner to ensure that you're successful at selling your number one, ensure that you're successful, you know, and number two, um, uh, to have the know-how and the knowledge and the resources, you know, to, to get top, you know, whatever that yeah, is. I know, I know where you're going. I got you. Yeah. hundred percent. So, so here's what we, we toy with. <laughs> Instead of the initial call, we're doing video text through a link that leads them to a landing page that communicates what you're talking about. And here's my position on this whole conversation. There's, there's many, many people that feel a certain way about like marketing versus prospecting. And you can debate that, right? It's like Republican versus Democrat. My belief in my own experience is that if we stopped this recording or kept it on, and I would do this live for anybody that would want to, I do it every Friday on my YouTube channel, in 30 minutes, or let's call it 60 minutes, I know with absolute certainty, and I know you love numbers too, that you and I, Josh, are going to absolutely have eight to 10 conversations with for sale by owners in 60 minutes. Between now and 60 minutes, talk to eight to 10 people. Well, let's, let's just talk about that. There's no marketing that I know of, and maybe you can coach me up here, that in 60 minutes, we can have 10 conversations with seller leads. I don't know of anything. So for me, I'm still under the belief that the phone is the most powerful, but the problem is it's the hardest. So there's, there's a lot of agents that don't want to go through that pain of lear learning that skill. They want to go down a marketing channel, look for a path of least resistance, my belief, right or wrong, I don't know if you agree with it or not, my belief is that, in my experiences, until a marketing mechanism can put me on a phone call in 60 minutes with 10 sellers, there's nothing that can take place of the phone yet. That's my position on it. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. No, I, I mean, it, it, it's... You know, it's like a live webinar versus a, an auto webinar. You know, right. Right? conversion rates are always going to be less and so forth. Right. Know? But then it could buy you back some time and, and, and it, uh, other things with that. Like, uh, and I've never tried to automate the FISBO process. Right. Just because, again, open houses are our are, are thing. I mean, 48% sure. of our new business comes from open houses. And it's been like one, like if I need a, if I need a, a client and closing now, yeah, I'm doing open house this weekend. I'm gonna I'm gonna get at least one active client ready to rock them with hands down. You know, right? Love so, it. so, uh, um, but we're able to leverage that with the FISBO, and it's worked so well over the years that, but like with expireds, you know, I got sick of. I mean, I just I just don't want to be phone person. You know, right? I'm just one of those guys that. It, yeah. You know, uh, 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 so you know, I, but dude, it took years, bro. I mean, it took years of refining and and you know studying every Dan Kennedy course and, and yeah. you know, figuring out effective sales letters and testing stamps and fonts and envelopes and you know um um but I got it with expires you know right I nailed it where, where yeah. over time my conversion rate became better than over the phone but the difference is expires are a longer term nurture so so That's 10 percent right. of expires that let's relist in the first 90 days 90 percent of them wait till after three months yeah right um and then from there it's it, I mean, it, that's after three months, you know, right? A lot of them are six, seven months, you know, so, um, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a different game there. So, and then the cool thing is, and I, I'm always preaching this to agents, so look, look there is a time where, where marketing can make sense in your business, you know, right? Um, when you are so busy servicing your clients that, that you can no longer, you know, do the prospecting, you know, right. Um, um, uh, then it, you either then delegate out potentially the prospecting or delegate out the, the, the client portion of it and the appointment portion of it. Something's got to be delegated out, you know, or you can pivot to marketing, you know, and whatever, you know, but in the beginning, it's like, did you prospect until, until you have that problem? But the cool thing is when you have that problem, then you have the money to be able to solve that problem. The That's best right. You want to solve it. You and know, you right? just, dude, you just nailed it. That's what you just said is the entire thing. And I'll just add one thing on there, Josh, is regardless of how someone's generating their leads, I think the thing that most people are forgetting is still it comes down to skills. I don't care if you're generating leads through prospecting or marketing. The second you have to pick up the phone and have a conversation or go present at a listing opportunity, it's still going to come down to your skill set. So I don't care if you believe in marketing or you believe in, in direct outbound prospecting. Don't care. 
eventually it's going to lead to a phone call. And that phone call, you better have some skills or you're not getting the appointment. And oh, by the way, when you go to the appointment, you better have some skills or your conversion is going to be shit. So that's the part that no one can debate, in my opinion. It's going to come down to how well you can communicate to a prospect to position yourself as the obvious choice. Well, in, 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 in 100% agree with everything that you said, but then the, the other added layer to that is, and this is something that most miss when they want to go to that marketing standpoint, is it still takes skills, you know, right? right. Like, like people always go, oh, Josh, I want to automate my business. Like you've automated, you know, your business and, you know, uh, so forth. I'm like, look, you guys have no fucking clue. It, no. it, it, it took more effort and was harder and took more money to, to you know, like it wasn't it, like your YouTube channel is an example. Like your YouTube channel is freaking epic and you're like, you're going to dominate. You're, you're going to be the number one, you know, mo- like you're on track to be, you know, the biggest YouTube influencer in our space, probably, you know, within the next 12 months or so. Like it's just exploding. Well, how long did it take you and does it continue to take you to develop the skill sets? It's not like you just go hit the record button and show up. You know, right. There's a methodology to it and that mastery of that. Like yeah. I was saying, that expired letter. Like if somebody wants to get into marketing, it took me years of tinkering, you know, right? Cause it, it, you're testing one thing at a time. Okay. Well, what this, this headline and let me test, you know, a, a, a five, a sample size of 500 variables, you know, right. With just this headline, the headlines, the control. Okay. Well then this image, then this, then this bullet, then this bullet, you know, right. Then it's a great a first point, class dude. stamp better than this. And you know, right. Like all of this stuff. I mean, it took, it's why when people are like, okay, oh, I buy your expired letter. And, and I'm like, yeah, but it's going to be a big price tag. And then yeah. I tell them the price tag I'm going to sell for, you know, right. Then they're like, well, it's a letter. I'm like, yeah, but it took me like a million dollars to figure that shit out. That's right. <laughs> you know, and you're right it's a million dollar letter. It'll make you millions over your career, but yeah. people don't get all that that goes into it. They want to compare Josh Joshua Smith's chapter 15 to their chapter one. Yeah. And that's the problem to your point is they say, okay, I hear guys say I can prospect. I hear guys say I can market it. Well, marketing is a lot sexier. It's still the same path to your point. It's still super hard. It's a total skill set. They, they most don't have the budget. They don't have the patience. They don't have the know-how. Um, and I think agents, you know, res- out of respect and love for the industry, the truth is agents want the path of least resistance, period. Well, and then the path of least resistance is to not figure the shit out on your own. That's right. Yeah, right. Like, like, you know, I got all these people right now, they're like, oh, Josh, you on Clubhouse? You on Clubhouse? I'm like, well, I got an account, but that's as far right. as I've taken it, you know, right? And I'm like, look, you guys, like, I, I don't try to be the pioneer. You, you always know the pioneer, what's the saying? Like, you always know who the pioneers are because they're face down in the dirt with arrows in their back, you know, right? Like, I'll let, I'll let everybody else go on Clubhouse, figure it out, because I don't need another fucking place to go out no. there and waste time, you know, right? Like, I'll let all these other people go figure it out and figure out how to monetize it and figure out the strategy and figure out how to grow their business business, you know, right. And then once they crack the code and I've learned, uh, 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 you know, I've been proven that it can do so by a trusted source, then I will break down and reverse engineer their strategy. Um, and what took them maybe 18 months to figure out, I can figure out in 18 hours. Yeah. You know, right. Like it, it, it's, totally it's agree, the, man. the ultimate time hack, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. So if I'm wanting to go out there and just nail this for sale by owner strategy, I'm going to go to a dude like you. Yeah. Right. Jump into your course. Um, and then I can just duplicate and copy everything. I don't have to think, you know, right. I just, now I got to execute and do, and I got a, a world-class proven strategy that if I follow it, I can too go out there and list and sell hundred homes a year. Yep. Dude, I to- hundred percent agree with everything you just said. We're totally in a philosophical alignment. Yep. So with that being said, that's probably a good segue, dude, into, I got some other questions for you too, but, but I figured it's probably a good time to, uh, uh, cause I'm sure people, you know, after I just went on that rant are, are curious about your, your, uh, uh, for sale by owner coaching program. And, and I, I think I could be wrong, but I think you have some other stuff that you offer too. In addition to that, um, you know, but for those that, that want to, you know, go, go grab it, go learn more, see what, what it looks like to work with you. Like what, where's the best place to go do that at? Yeah. Just go to reverse selling.com. Uh, we have a group coaching program. We're teaching agents uh, our exact for sale by owner strategies. And, and really what we're teaching is how agents, even in this market, can go out there and build a listing-based business and control their time, control their income. Uh, and that's what we teach agents to do, to go out there in the community, Josh, and serve their community at the highest level and, uh, and position themselves through the law of reciprocity to go out there and win listings regardless of lead source. 
Yep. Love it, dude. All right. So somebody's sitting there. Okay. Yeah, Brandon, but you own this huge brokerage now and the mortgage company and title company. And now you're coaching and you know, you're not listing these hundred homes a year and you don't know what it's like in this market right now. Uh, um, um, you know, this wouldn't work right now when there's, you know, very, you know, few for sale by, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, how do you combat that? Well, just like I would combat any objection from anybody first, I'm going to agree because for sale by owners are selling like crazy on their own. And quite frankly, for sale by owners, isn't the number one lead source right now in a market like this, I'm coaching everyone to go after the best listing source on planet earth, which is absentee owners. These are people who have rode the market up with their one or two rentals and they're sick of being landlords their tenants no longer have to pay rent due to all the COVID stuff. And so they're wanting to get out of that. And so we're focusing all of our time, energy, and effort on absentee owners. There's tens of thousands in every city across the market. And then in addition to that, I'm teaching and coaching agents how to go and work with divorce attorneys, probate attorneys, estate attorneys, and the people that have all the listings. How do we go and position ourselves from a referral partner strategy Fizbo's is just one small piece of the pie, Josh. All these other opportunities in a market like this, I argue is way better than a for sale by owner. It's most agents just aren't doing it. Assisted living, that's a huge piece of our business. And all those people are listing their homes. Yeah, I love that, dude. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm uh, just from following your YouTube channel, you know, I mean, being, being so, I mean, there's so many for sale by owner stuff in there. Yeah. I had the assumption and, and maybe a lot of our, uh, of those watching, listening to this, you know, that, that the coaching was around for sale by owners specifically. So I'm glad, I'm glad I, I, I you know, played devil's advocate there for a minute. Um, yeah. You know, cause it, it's, it's, you know, it's, as you mentioned, it's teaching people how to go out there and be a dominant listing agent. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We, uh, you know, it, historically to be fair, we were teaching people just on for sale by owners. And now we've got our programs called the listing agent Academy. We're teaching all listing lead sources and people helping people pick a niche, helping them focus and master a niche. And there's a bunch out there that most agents have never even heard of. And that's what we do is we teach agents how to master that niche. I know you believe in niches. Uh, and that's what we do in our program. Yeah, I love it, man. Something I've always been, I've always preached, and I had to learn this on early in my career, and luckily I had some great mentors, but it's, you know, it, it, there's never, there's no such thing as a good or bad market. That's it's right. Always a good market, right? We just got to identify whom is it good for, and then move, shift, adapt, pivot our time, energy, and focus to whom it's good for. You know, so when I first got in the business 2005, dude, it was great for traditional, you know, anybody with traditional real estate, you know, right? Yeah. Um, uh, then 2007 hit, and I stumbled into to uh, uh, short sales on accident through all my expireds, you know, right? Um, but yeah. the next thing you know, like, so then I had to shift and adapt to short sales. Then it became REO, you know, when that started to bottom out, all these huge hedge fund institutions came in, had to position myself these hedge funds. And now we're doing, you know, 50, 60 deals a month with hedge funds. And then, you know, the uh, uh, market started to correct. And then it was traditional, um, you know, uh, uh, and then in this crazy market right now, like we've had to, uh, you know, move, shift and, and adapt still traditional, but then, you know, back to uh, uh, combining our investors with our traditional business, you know, right? Well, we'll have investors that will come in and buy their house, then go buy the house for them, sell them, you know, then sell this one back to them and then buy this one. So it allows, you know, our sellers that are, are have a contingency that, that we wouldn't accept, you know, right? To become a cash buyer and same thing for, so, so it's always just about reinventing ourselves um, um, and focusing on where that business is at because it's always to be had. You know, as Darwin said, it's not the strongest of the species that survive. It's he or she that, uh, you know, or the species that adapts and shifts to change. That's right. The quickest level. I love, dude, that you're pivoting to where the business is and, and you're, you're navigating your people through where yeah. the best opportunity is at this given time. And I'll just add, I mean, my biggest thing that that I, I'm, I'm starting to talk more about on my YouTube channel is like referral partners. Think about this. Every realtor that watches this is going to say, wait a minute, that makes a lot of sense. We are the prey nine times out of 10. Look at how many people call us, the mortgage companies, the title people, the home warranty people, the inspector people looking for our business constantly, constantly, constantly. Well, wouldn't it only make sense for, as realtors to look at the industries that are working with the prospects that we want to work with and we become the hunter as an example, divorce attorneys. This is one segment of the market 
market, good or bad, so many people are getting divorces. And Josh, over 80% of every divorce ends with a real estate transaction. More times than not, there's three real estate transactions. So an agent that has 10 divorce attorneys, that's all they deal with. They will never be without listings for the rest of their career if that's all they did. So there's, you know, it's just... To your point, it's it's looking at things more strategically. Everyone talks about Fizbo's expired. That's like that's like the least piece of the pie. There's all these bigger pieces of the pie that I guess people just just aren't thinking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 what I love about this business, dude, is there's just so much fucking opportunity. Yeah, yeah. You know, I always tell people it's like it's like look, we're not selling Kirby, Kir, you know, Kirby vacuums or solar panels. We're like our only play is door to door in these areas. That's right. Yeah, right. Like we have infinite ways we can approach it, but also infinite niches that we can go after, and we have so much freedom and and uh, just. Uh, allows it to, to be so effective, dude. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, I've, I had a dude on the podcast we've become friends now this a couple of years ago, you know, but I mean, dude, he's doing, I mean, last time I checked with him about 75 deals a year, just from probate attorneys, yeah. you know, right. Feeding him the business. You That's know, right. right um, and he had to, he had to work that relationship and, yeah. you know, is, is, I can't remember who said it, but, uh, 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 you know, famous quote in the sales world of, you know, you got to dig your, dig the well before you're thirsty, you know, right. Plant those relationships or, you know, I just had a dude on the podcast about two weeks ago we haven't released it yet but uh you know he's he's will smith and jada pinkett smith's attorney or i'm sorry realtor uh you know in the la area as well i mean he's with all these celebrities but he was like yeah. all right like celebrities they don't get to choose me they it's it's their their business managers there are their you know their their managers that so that was the gatekeeper and that's exactly right dude like that's like the best that's like the most fun business to go after instead of like you know, being such a commodity, going consumer direct, make it a B2B business. It's so enjoyable. It's very profitable. And dude, you're nailing it. I, I totally agree with you hundred percent. Yeah. Like if I go to my attorney and my attorney, like my, my, uh, my personal, you know, for handles all my uh, personal estate, you know, right. Um, yep. And she's like, all right, uh, 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 you know, you need to do this and here's whom I recommend. Like, dude, like I'm not going to bat an eye at it. Like, yep. like I know her, I trust her. You know, right? Like whatever she says to go, like I'm gonna go with that recommendation. You know, right? I mean, it's it's yep. such that warm recommendation. It's just like when your best friend, you know, is telling you like, oh, dude, you got to go with this person. Like you're gonna listen to your best friend. You know, right? It's it's that same same you know hot lead source. You know, right? Um, yeah, I love it, dude. So then. <laughs> All right. So kind of switching gears here. Um, uh, you know, I'm curious with, with the brokerage side, dude, um, uh, you know, at what point did you decide, I mean, cause you're, you're, you're listing, uh, you know, listing selling over hundred homes a year. You got an assistant at that point, I'm guessing your margins are amazing, yep. you know, right. Especially with this strategy that costs very little money. Uh, uh so a lot of profit. Um, uh, like what, what made you decide you wanted to go down the brokerage path? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Someone hit me in the head. And so I don't know what happened, but so here's what happened. What happened was at the company I was with, I was with KW and, um, there, everyone was like, dude, can you teach? Can you train? Can you coach everybody on, on what you're doing? And so I started to do that. And then I was, I found myself coaching broker owners, like these market centers all over the country. And, I'm like, and then the other thing to me was, I just felt that the brokerages were underserving the realtors. And there's something I call the value exchange. And, and I know you believe in this too. I felt like it was disproportionate. I felt like the traditional brokerage model was what it, what it says. It was broke. Agents pay a whole bunch of money for a little bit of value. So I said, what if there was a world where those two things were the opposite, where agents got a whole shitload of value and they paid very, very little. And so that's where we came up. I mean, our concept is not new. I mean, there's tons of 100% concepts in Arizona and California and like the sexy states, if you will, but no one was doing that here in a big way in Michigan. You know what I mean? Like you can't even name any. And so we we said, okay, let's go out there and make this happen. Let's provide training. Let's provide coaching. Let's provide tools, technology, leadership, servant leadership. And oh, by the way, our agents get to keep all the money and the thing has exploded. And so we saw an opportunity in the marketplace and it's, it's panned out to work very, very well. That's awesome. Dude. I love it, man. Love it, dude. So then uh, how, how long did you start the brokerage? Uh, 19 months ago. 19 months ago. So you've went from 
you probably being the agent yep. <laughs> that wrote it, um, to now 200 agents. What yep. what has, because again, man, we, we got a lot of team leaders and broker owners that listen to this podcast. And yep. you know, for, for, for them, when I'm having conversations with them, just like for agents right now, it's how do I get more listings? Their biggest bottleneck is how do I get more agents? Like, like what has allowed you guys to scale to become the fastest growing real estate brokerage in the state of Michigan now? Watch this. So now full circle, it's the same FISBO strategy with realtors. So we go out there and we serve and we lead the realtors in Michigan check it out, regardless if they're with our company. We don't care. You're, we're coaching you for free. You're coming to our events for free. We're showing you how to make content. We're giving you open house opportunities. We're showing you designs. We're giving you designs. We're going out there and essentially uh, leading the realtors, Josh, without asking for anything in return, without having to sell them, without having to do any of that stuff. And we're showing up in their lives like their broker owners should that aren't. And then again, the law of reciprocity says, wait a minute, like this is what you guys all do at your company and I get to keep all the money. So we've just positioned it the same way that we do when we go out there and we win listings is we go serve a community where the community is not used to being served, right? This is servant leadership 101 and the agents aren't used to that. Just like a FISBO isn't used to a realtor saying you should sell on your own. I don't care what they say. When we say you should keep all the money and you should get the tools and you should get tech and you should get training and you should get coaching. They're like, are you serious? I'm dead serious. So we go out there and we educate, we lead through education, we pour into the realtor community. And then this positions us to be the obvious choice. And they come knocking down our door. We meet with them. We show them what we can do to help them grow their business. And it's, it, it's an easy decision for them to make, but that's what we do. We lead with contribution. I love it, dude. That's so amazing, bro. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and, and it's it's the the same thing, you know, right? Meaning that realtors at some point they're going to experience pain. Yep. Right, and then they're going to start thinking about, okay, this isn't working for me, my brokerage. Yeah, right. Um, but then because you know, like, then you you're entering the conversation that's taking place in their mind when that conversation takes place. You know, right. Uh, 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 my buddy, John Cheplak, who's one of the top you know, recruiting the coaches. Best. On, He's on, the best. You know, right. He always talks about like, you got to become the destination brokerage, you know, right. Um, and, and that's what you've done, dude. And, and you're, but you position yourself to attract, not chase. That's right. You know, right? And I'm just selling anybody. It's like, now you got people coming to you that want to be a part of you because at, at, at 200 agents, right. Um, uh, with the volume that you guys are doing, I mean, that, that's a huge average, especially with you guys being that new of a brokerage. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that's a huge average production uh, uh, per agent average. I mean, I'm guessing that you're probably in the top 1% of, of, of brokerages in the nation with your average agent production, you know, right? Um, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's big, you know, right? Um, like here, here in Arizona, and every state's different, but like here in Arizona, we're the most saturated real estate market per capita on the planet. Yeah. The average agent is 2.2 transactions a year. I know. You know right. And, and your agents are, you know, out there doing, uh, you know, vastly much more than that. You know, especially when I say that if somebody starts doing the quick math, they're like, well, it's, it, it doesn't necessarily maybe equate to yeah, what, yeah, what yeah. I'm saying here, but what you guys are maybe missing is the brokerage is only 19 months old. So a lot of these agents that you're recruiting that did that volume, was a, was probably a small percentage of those 200, you know, right? right. So, we, you know, you're I mean, nailing. You're, 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 what you're saying is exactly right. And for the audience, Josh, you're exactly right. What, you know, our, our, it's not where we want it to be, but what happens, as you know, when you, when you recruit an agent, they saw production at their old company that hasn't come over. That's one big piece of it. And our per, uh, our, our per agent productivity isn't where we want it to be, but yeah, I mean, it's like, it hovers between seven and eight, where to your point, a lot of companies at, 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 of, of this model are like two or three. So it's not where we want to go, but yeah, I mean, we're not even two years in the game yet. And, you know, if we can get to 12, 15, 18 units per agent, like dude, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be epic. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's so killer, man. All right, Brandon, I know we're going long on time here, dude. Um, for those that, uh, and I'll just have you repeat it just because, you know, I mean, most of our listeners are, are driving in the car, you yeah. know, right. They're listening to this while they're working out and so forth. So just in case they missed it, and we'll of course have all these links below for you guys to scroll below and, and, you know, but here, here's what I want you guys to all do is I want you to 100% go check out Brandon's YouTube channel, subscribe to it, 
hit that notification bell, smash that like, but you know, on the, the shit that we, you know, uh, yeah. uh, 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 but look, dude, like it is a legit, you know, there, there's so many, it's just like books almost. It, it's just like, it's just so much fluff and just bullshit and non, non like actual tactical, you know, strategic things that you can take and implement. Most of it's just, fucking somebody stroking their own ego, you know, right. Uh, 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 the whole thing's a sales pitch. They, they, you know, aren't really telling you anything of value. Uh, Brandon's channel is hundred percent different, man. Like you go on, like, you're not going to watch one video on there and not learn something amazing. So, uh, definitely go check that out. So Brandon, real quick again, man, like, like what, where, where did they go see the YouTube channel at? Um, and then just a reminder again of, of the best place to, to go learn more about your coaching. Yeah. My YouTube channel is just my name. It's Brandon Mulrennan. And to Josh's point, the goal for our YouTube channel is just to pour into your business tactics, strategies. We're not leaving anything behind. We'll give you the whole playbook. And then you guys can just go to reverse selling.com. You can learn about the work that we do or go to brookstonerealtors.com, which is the name of our brokerage. You can learn all about what that model looks like. And um, yeah, dude, listen, thanks for having me on. Uh, I think I love the work that you do and, and, and how much you've poured into this industry, dude. It's insane. And so this industry owes you a debt of gratitude. And so thank you for all that you do too, man. Yeah, no, it truly means a lot, man. I appreciate the kind words and the support and, and appreciate you taking time. You're busy to be here, dude. This has been, it's been fucking epic, man. And uh, again, it truly means a lot. And those, those watching and listening, as always, truly appreciate you guys being here. Hopefully you take away, took away some massive nuggets. I know I got several pages of notes here myself. So I, I, I know that you did as well. Um, but look, you guys, information without implementation is just a start of delusion. It's not about just getting information, man. You got to execute on that information. Wisdom is applied knowledge. Yeah, right. Like go out there and execute. Take something that you learn. Go out there and execute. Again, go check out Brandon's YouTube channel. Like it, subscribe to it, keep binging it. You guys will love it. I promise you. Um, and with that being said, thank you for your all your support. Thank you for being here. Keep kicking ass. We'll see you next time. Peace. Um, I hope you enjoyed this GSD mode podcast episode. Now make sure you get shit done and smash that subscribe button now.